Today, we're taking a fun and easy approach to start messing around with 3D using that cool blocky pixel style look, also known as voxel style. We will build a simple character from scratch and learn some basic tips along the way. We'll check how you can add basic animations and turn your character into a fun little mini game. And if you check out the video description, we've dropped some remixable files you can mess around with or use as a starting point for your own creations. So we'll start by designing this cute piggy, something super simple to begin with. First, let's create a cube. Just go to the top toolbar and now click here. Then you can simply click in the scene and the cube will appear or click and drag to create it. If you want to scale it evenly, hold shift while dragging. And for this design, let's just keep the corners at zero so the cube has nice, sharp, straight edges. Let's make sure our cube is centered in the composition by setting its position to zero, zero, zero. You can also do this by right-clicking the group or control click and choosing reset position. And now you can duplicate this cube using Command-D or Control-D on Windows and then just play around with their size and position to start building the rest of the character. Here we're adjusting the shape of the cube a bit so it starts to look like the piggy's snout. And now we can duplicate and scale another one to create the cheeks. You can adjust the view here to check it from different angles. And one thing that can help at this point is enabling snapping. Press Escape to make sure nothing is selected and go to Global Settings. Here you can enable or disable the grid and choose from different planes made up of different axes. You can choose to snap to objects or snap to the grid. The good thing about turning on snapping is that it helps keep your objects nicely aligned. This will help us work more precisely and stay oriented in the 3D space. As we go, we can name the layers that make up our character. Keeping your layers organized and clearly named saves a lot of time, especially if you plan to animate or add interactions later. For the ears, we'll take a closer look at how we can use modeling tools to shape and edit the cube's mesh. Simply select your cube and click the Smooth and Edit option. If we increase the subdivision level, the edges and forms become softer and more rounded. In this case, since we want to keep the cube edges straight, we'll set the subdivision to zero. Up here, you can use the different modeling tools. You can do things like extrude, inset, or add edge loops to create more complex shapes. Let's first press C to use the loop cut tool and then just click here. Then press X and let's select this face to extrude it. Just drag it using the gizmo here and then we can duplicate it. And now let's add a few more cubes here to start creating our piggy's little legs. We can go ahead and select both, duplicate them together and shift them over. And now I can turn off the grid here. So now we've got the basic body shape done. We can finish the remaining details like the eyes and inner ears using simple 2D shapes. And you can go ahead and add a color here for now just to help differentiate it from the rest of the character. And just like before, you can keep duplicating and adjusting the position of these shapes. And you can always switch the grid back on here to help line things up more easily. And we can do the same for the nose details.
Let's adjust the color here as well and then duplicate it. And in case you want to add some depth to these shapes, just go to the right sidebar and adjust the extrusion. And you can keep using this for the rest of the character too. And now to add colors and materials to your character, just click on any element in the scene, then head over to the material section in the right sidebar. Here you can choose a color or apply materials and textures. We're going to stick with a flat and bright color style. Over here in the lighting settings, let's choose Lambert to get a nice matte finish without any shiny highlights. And then just click here to choose a different blending mode and go ahead and select Overlay. This will make the colors pop more by enhancing the highlights and shadows. So let's say that you're using the same color in different parts of your character or scene. You can create material assets to reuse that material easily. To do that, once you've set up a material, click on this four dots icon here. And now click this plus icon and name your material. And to reuse or apply the same material to another object, just select the object, click the four dots icon here in the materials panel and choose the material. And we can apply the same material to the ears and the little legs as well. What if we added some eyebrows? We can duplicate the shape of the eyes and adjust the size a bit for both. And a quick tip, you can use the eyedropper tool while adding color. It lets you grab the exact same color and even create subtle shades to keep everything looking harmonious and well-matched. Then we just keep adding color to the rest of the character using colors or material assets. And with that, the design is done. If you go to the left sidebar, you can click on the Assets tab to see all your material assets. When you click on one, the panel where you can edit that material will appear. And any change you make updates automatically across all objects using it. And if you click on the three dots icon, you'll see more options like select the objects using this asset, edit, duplicate, or delete. And with that, our character is all done. The voxel style, it has a charming, nostalgic feel that's instantly recognizable. It's also great for keeping interactive experiences light and fun since it's simple, efficient, and easy to work with. A fun way to bring your character to life is by adding game controls, and you'll be able to move it around using your keyboard, mouse, and even on touch devices like phones and tablets. Just select it, create a new event, and add game controls. It works right away by default, but you can tweak the settings to give it a bit more personality. We can adjust how it moves, and for example, we can go back to the settings, set Auto Orient to No, and under Forward Direction, choose Negative Z. This is helpful if your object is facing one direction, but you want it to move the opposite way without needing to rotate it manually. You can also turn on the click to move option. Once it's enabled, just tap or click anywhere in your scene and your character will head straight there. If you want to animate a character like this, moving the arms or legs, it's important to first adjust the pivot point. The pivot is the origin point that defines how and from where an object moves, rotates, or scales. To adjust it, make sure the body part is grouped. Then hold Option or Alt on Windows and click the Group layer. Then use the gizmo to move the pivot's axis position. 
Now we can see that because the pivot point is at the shoulder rather than the middle of the arm, the arm rotates correctly. Make sure to repeat this with all parts, arms, legs, etc. You can explore create small movements and transitions in each part of the character. Just create a new state and apply a change in rotation, position, or scale. For example, in the arm animation, we just made small rotation changes between each state. And we did the same with other parts of the character like the head, legs, and all of these are inside a group to include a rotation of the body as well. Then you just need to create a start event for each part you want to animate, and you can adjust the timing and sequence with an infinite loop. Setting the cycle to ping pong reverse means it will play forward and then go backward, like a rewind motion. For this kind of animation, not everything has to move at the same time or at the same speed. Tweaking the timing for each part separately makes the animation feel more natural and smooth. And just by adding these simple movements, you can create a basic animation to make your character feel alive. You can also apply game controls to this type of avatar and make the arms and legs move along with the character. And actually, we already have a tutorial about this. We'll leave the link in the description. But let us know in the comments if you'd like to dive deeper and learn more about game controls and tips for creating mini game experiences. And once you have your animated or interactive character ready, then you can export your project using Spline Viewer. This lets you easily add interactive 3D scenes to your website without coding. Just copy and paste the embed link and you're all set. And there are also native 3D embeds for iOS and Android so you can add your scenes straight into mobile apps. That's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and that it inspires you to start creating in this style. Check out our other tutorials and explore more ways to bring your 3D characters and designs to life. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to learn next, and we'll see you soon.